Hello, welcome to a very exciting creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover the brand new Flow Advanced Particle Effects System that was just introduced to all users of Creature Pro. Now this is a completely free update for Creature Pro users. I hope you guys appreciate this because it's a super, super powerful feature that we're adding to the Creature Animation tool. And what is Flow? Flow is basically a procedural note-based tool to let you author a variety of particle effects. You can author simple stuff like falling objects, you know, throwing a bunch of simple particles, apples, whatnot, and let them fall into gravity. Or you can animate some really complex phenomena like fire, streams, fluids, things that re rely on temperature, buoyancy, that sort of stuff. So it ranges from a very simple fluid type solver scenario to something that runs full blown uh, fluid dynamics equations. So this is a very powerful procedural based system that will allow you to author a huge variety of phenomena that should cater to many needs. It's optimized for multi-core systems, so I recommend you have hopefully an i5 or at least an i7, and it requires quite a bit of RAM, so 16 gigabytes and above is recommended. Currently, right now, Flow supports video image exports for cutscenes and film. That's the first target we're going after. Uh, but the game engine support is, is going to be looked at next. We have to optimize and make sure it actually runs properly on the systems. Now, Flow is not going to replace, even when the game engine support comes out, it's not going to replace fully the particle systems in your game engine because it's obviously going to be a lot more dynamic. However, Flow is going to allow for really cool cutscenes and pre-baked effects so you can pick and choose between what you want. And finally, I want to say again, it's a free update for all Creature Pro users, so you guys should really take advantage of that. And without further ado, let's start with a simple example today. We're going to have a whole suite of tutorials teaching, teaching you how to use Flow. And we're going to start off simple by constructing a very basic particle system and seeing how Flow works. Okay, so let's get started with Flow. In this example, I have a very simple single image mesh deforming. It's a branch basically that wobbles with some kind of wind motion. If you're not familiar with the basic core creature concepts of motors, I recommend you watching the previous tutorials. But essentially I just have a band physics, a couple of band physics motors here on the branch and they are driven by a force field. You can do anything you want, but we're here to demonstrate flow for you today. What we're going to do here is we're going to emanate some very simple particles, maybe from a part of the branch, to, to start off with a simple example. And then, as I said, we're going to have other tutorials that's going to take it a lot further. But let's start simple first. Okay, so how do we start emanating particles from this branch? Very simple. Click on Animate, go to Motor Swaps and Effects, and move your mouse over to Flow and this brings up the flow window. So this is the flow window. Initially it's empty, so it's not very interesting. The first, the first thing we need to do is to actually create a particle solver. Now a particle solver essentially is going to be the thing that actually runs our particle simulation. Now how do we actually start everything in flow? Very simple, right click, it will bring up a context pop-up menu and you can see a variety of objects that you can actually create in this system. I'm going to move my mouse over to solvers and click on regular solver. So this is the particle solver. In most cases you're going to be just using the particle solver because it's extremely powerful already but take note there is another one called the grid solver which actually solves a full-blown fluid dynamics equation. We're going to get to that in the future tutorials but for now let's do the particle solver. So we have the particle solver by itself, again, not very interesting. What we need now for the solver is a source. The source is where the particles are created or, or spawned. So we move our mouse over to the sources and we will pick a radio source. Now, there are many, many options on the radio source, but don't worry, don't, don't be overwhelmed by it because you just need to tweak a couple of them. The first thing I'm gonna do is the spawn num. This is the number of particles that spawned Per, per frame or per time step. I'm going to set it to one, so there's less particles. Too many particles might overwhelm, overwhelm the system, depending on how much RAM you have. But in most cases, you don't even actually need that many particles because it actually accumulates. Okay, And I'm going to connect up the radio source. You connect it up to the particle solver. This is actually saying that the source, the, sorry, the solver is going to actually be 
have this radial source, so it's going to emanate from it, right? Now, with this, nothing's still going to happen. We have to actually pick a region, region mesh, that the particle is going to, the particle source is, is going to spawn from. So what we do is we go to the regions, go back to your animation window, click on regions, and select, say, your branch. So this is selected. And then now click on region IDX. It will say select your region mesh in the animation window in regions mode. So you have picked that one. So just click set and it'll pick, it picks the branch. Now this, this is actually for picking the depth or layer ordering. Okay. So for example, if you wanted the particles to be emanated from, say, the torso of a character and you want it to spawn behind the hand because the hand is on top of the torso, you would pick the torso. Similarly, if you wanted to spawn on top of the torso, you pick the hand. So this is actually deciding the depth or ordering of how the particles are spawned from this source. Yeah? Okay. That's not enough. <laughs> That's We're not done yet. The next thing we have to do is to actually pick an image for, you know, to be, to be spawned from the source. And the, the way you do that is to move your mouse over to the Sprite Image button. Now, if you are familiar with the Sprite Frame Manager, you'll probably be familiar with this because these are exactly the same images you get from the Sprite Frame Manager. So you can either import from there, or you can import from here conveniently. So you can pick, say, one image from this, say this one, and click OK. Yeah? OK. So are we done? Well, we can try and see. Let's see what happens. Uh, actually, we need, sorry, we need one more thing. There's no forces acting on the source, right? So particles are just coming out. So what do we do? We right click again, go to fields and add gravity. And this time, similarly, we connect the gravity up to the fields. Okay, let's see if we get anything. Let's click on run. Okay, so you see something coming out. Let's play. And now you see the particles are coming out from the 0, 0, 0 position of the branch because we picked position as 0, 0, and 0. Very simple, right? Okay, so that's the simplest example you can think of. We can actually reduce the radius of how it spawned by just clicking on the radius and then setting, setting it to 1. And let's try running the particle simulation again. And now you can see the particles are spawned from a smaller radius, right? And of course, we can also change the angles, right? We can change how the angles, the spawning angles and the spawning velocity. So if I increase the spawning velocity, say 35, and I make the ending velocity to be 60, it's going to spawn within the range of 35 to 60. So let's try that again. Right, so there you go. Now the particles are getting spawned to the right. Yeah, And of course, I can increase the gravity. So you can see how we're just playing with these parameters, these procedural parameters, you get some interesting effects. So now you can see how they, they, they go out and then they fall under gravity. In fact, I can increase that even more. Now the gravity has a bigger effect, right? Let's increase it even more, just, just for interest's sake. Okay, so now you have gravity pulling on the particles and this is your, your standard particle system. Still not very interesting. Now, the thing with the particles is the particles were emanated from a fixed position, but most of the time you don't want that. You actually want the particles to be spawned from a specific location that follows a part of the mesh. That's when it gets actually interesting. So how do we do that? Well, very simple in flow because everything is all node based and procedural based. So right click again, go to sources and then click on character embed position. Now this is a very powerful feature. This actually allows you to embed or rather set a position on the mesh. So it follows the mesh and you spawn directly from the position of the mesh. So even the mesh is deforming or, animate, uh, or animating, you, you, you can actually spawn from an animated position. So once you have this, move your mouse over to embed try, which is the embedded triangle. A new window pops up. It says set source point in the animation window. Now you see this red dot here? Just drag it to wherever point you want. Yeah, so I can drag it here, for example. So it's gonna spawn from here. Click on set. Okay, you're not done yet because we have to connect up the region pos, this embedded pos, to the radio source. There's no red but a red, you know, link for you to connect it up. The way you do it is this embedding node is gonna 
create a bunch of output positions in these you know different dimensions so you just connect the output to the input of your source and in fact this is you can see how powerful this is you can actually connect this to a lot of these inputs it doesn't necessarily have to be the position you can actually connect it to the color even though it's going to be very strange but in this case we want to use it normally so we're going to connect the output position to the input position of the source so this means that all the animated positions are going to feed into flow into the source so the source is actually going to use so this 000 is not going to be used it's going to be overwritten by whatever is from the embedded position so now let's run the simulation and you can see already it's embedded here and look at that now it's actually following the animation is actually getting an em emanated or spawned from a, an animated position on the deforming mesh. So pretty cool stuff. Now let's try something else, right? This is a simple tutorial. As I said, we're going to do even more advanced stuff in the future tutorials, but just for a glimpse of what you can, we can do in the future, in the, in the future tutorials, we can actually do sprite animation. So if you check this, it's not very interesting if the particles themselves aren't changing, right? So if they were actually animated, like you can actually swap, do uh, sprite swapping, that's even more interesting. And you can do that with flow. That's actually how you get even more advanced effects. So check, check this box, use sprite animation. And then now move your mouse over to sprite animation. It says zero items, so there's no sprite animation selected. So all you need to do now is hold down your control key and then select your animated particles, you know, the sequence. This, this numbering shows the sequence, click on OK. And now it says nine items, so you have nine frames for sprite swapping. The next thing is the sprite anim frame pause. So this is the number of frames before you switch to the next animated frame, the swap to the next frame. So one means you swap every frame, it might be too quick for you. So maybe you can try two, so it swaps every two frames. Yeah. And let's run the sim, let's see what we get. So now you can see, you can see that it's actually at animating over the course of the frames. And we can probably slow this down a bit more by making it three. Okay, there you go. So these are animated sprites. And you can do lots of things with it. This is just a simple example. Now, the if we do one, let's see what we get. This might be, um, okay, so now they're blinking a lot because they're swapping very, very quickly. That's a very simple example, but you can see how in the more elaborate examples, in more elaborate examples, you can actually get some very sophisticated effects. Like now, if I do it to five, it's, it's you know, a bit more interesting now because it's swapping at probably the correct rate. Okay, the other thing you probably want to know about is this lifetime. So each particle has a lifetime and it fades over time, right? So if I up the lifetime fade to say 1.5, the particles will expire much faster. And sometimes that's what you want because you don't want the particles to you know, go off the screen too much. So you should play around with that. It also reduces your particle count. Now, the radio source itself has some pretty interesting properties. I'm gonna go through more of them in the future. But one thing to sort of break up the monotony of a particle simulation is to vary the sizes. So right now you can see in the, the size starts size scale start and size scales scale end they're the same so in other words the starting and, and ending spawning scales of the particles the, the whole variety the distribution of the scaling is, is is one there's no there's actually no difference so what I can do is I can actually set say to three one to three so we're gonna have particles are sized from one to three as they get spawned out yeah right? and then if I click run again and so there you go now I have particles that are small and large I think that's pretty cool, huh? Right. I can also, of course, up the angular velocity. So you can see, just start playing with these, these effects, and you can get a whole wide variety of different results. So now the particles are spinned in different... There you go. Now the particles spin with different angular velocities, just by, just by simply tweaking these procedural parameters. Now this is a very, very simple particle network very simple node network and as you can see we've really done a lot I'm gonna go through more of this in the future we can actually do more much more advanced stuff streams asteroids fires buoyancy stuff that relies on temperature you know ink so the the, the possibilities are simply quite endless to be honest 
uh, but we'll this is a simple example so I hope you enjoyed it and we're gonna have a whole series of tutorials exploring the flow advanced particle effect system in the future thanks for watching and ha happy animating